Hello world and welcome back. I am Carhu the Great Bear of the North and this is Venezia Universalis. We're doing well and Leroy Jenkins uh, has mentioned that uh, I need to be wary of a coalition firing. And that's absolutely true, specifically once the Ottomans get involved in things. Um, I don't want that to happen. Um, let's see, we do have a new, uh, trade, uh, a new idea group. I want to pick trade. I was going to open it up to you guys again. But we are Venice. Even if we are a kingdom, we are still Venetians at heart. Um, so that's what I wanted to do. And there's one other thing that I wanted to do. Oh, yes. I wanted to build some ships. Carrick. Let's get two, three. There we go. Wonderful. Ottoman particularists have entered our borders. But that's fine. They're, they're, they're going to stay within the Ottoman Empire. And that's going to happen. Um, so let's see who is in the coalition against us. Uh, um, no, Ragusa. Yeah, they're not going to leave anytime soon. Um, Austria. Oh, I have 100 with them. So let's fabricate some claims on Cremona and fabricate claims on Parma. Ayo, there we go. And we can get that guy back. So, let's see. Who is in the coalition? Uh, nope, that's not the right thing. Uh, Checky. Let's get them. So, oh, minus 197. That's almost, that's pretty futile, actually. We're going to bring them back. Uh, Austria, we're already at 100. We're Naples. Oh, we can totally get Naples out of the coalition. Yeah, let's do that. Um, who else can we get out of the, who else is in the coalition? Uh, Luca and Firenze. So Luca, improve relations. There we go. And Firenze, actually, can we get Ragusa? Because I did some research in between things. And if we can get um, the outraged modifier to go away, which is going to take a while from Ragusa, we do own a lot of their territory, um, we might be able to do some things. Oh, um, Bosnian separatist. Herzegovina. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to do this the easy way. And the Orthodox Zealots. Where are the Orthodox Zealots? Kataro. There we go. That's going to get rid of most of that. We still need to get people in Travunia and Visoki, but that should go away. That should go away over time. Especially as our overextension goes away. One of our generals has left us. Let's see. Serbian Separatists. Oh boy, that's going to trigger. Okay. Orthodox Zealots, that's going to go away. And we need people in Kataro. How is our... Our missionary is not actually making any progress. That will get rid of the... That would have gotten rid of Kataro right there. Dang. Let's send him to Dandolo. Alright, this isn't bad. Serbian Separatists, wow. That progressed quite a bit. Can they progress more than 10% per month? Because I think they totally just did. I think that went up by 30%. I'm not sure. But these guys are minus 2.25. You're going to Travonia. Actually, Kataro doesn't need anybody right now. So there we go. Serbian Separatists. There we go. And Albania. Albania is also going to trigger. Okay, Scutari and Dorazzo. Naples, end of religious turmoil. That's good. Royal marriage with France. How is... How are France... France is doing lovely. Castile is doing okay. Um, but this is good. This is good. Uh, let's get an administrative... Actually, what is our income? Our income is only 0.39. But national tax modifier. We'll change that. Boom. Because our tax was 30%, it just went up by 33% as a result of hiring him. That should more than cover his salary. There you go. See? Told you. Um, oh, let's split that up. Croatian separatists have crossed our borders. Dang. Okay, well, how do we get into Dalmatia without crossing a river? Not from Ragusa or from Herzegovina, which is unfortunate because those are the two places that we can actually access them from. Um, that's, that's joy. 
that is pure, unadulterated joy. I just want to see if they will suffer some from disease or something like that. Um, so we're just going to hold off on that for a little bit. Oh, we have a new idea. Trade ideas. Yes. Allows us to make use of more refined trading practices, giving our merchants the upper hand over our competitors. Good. Damasio's minus 14. Once this gets to zero, that'll be like the last chance. Okay, there we go. Let's make sure these guys get in. Come on. Let's make sure the big one gets in first. And then these guys are going to be reinforcements. Boom. And there we go. They're dead. They're gone. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Bosnian separatists. Travunia. If we leave, go back there, they'll go away. Why aren't Naples and Luca at the coalition yet? Because let's, I mean, plus 39. I mean, that should be pretty good. That should be pretty good. The coast has been raided. We're now losing. What? Oh, yeah, reinforcements. Um, I don't want to drop down my military spending. Because I am afraid of... I, I, I'm, I'm paranoid about rebels, uh, is what I am. And the coalition is actually kind of scary. I'll be perfectly honest, that coalition is kind of scary. So I'll actually go into debt again, just to make sure that we don't get, that we don't get attacked by coalition. Because the higher your army maintenance, the less likely they are to join you. I mean, that's not going away anytime soon. But what about, what about Austria? They have rivaled me, I have rivaled them. So that's not going to go away anytime soon. I'm, what I mean, this should go away. They should leave. You know what? Let's stop the relationship improvement with them. Let's work on Firenze instead. Oh, Naples has Siena. I didn't know that. Okay, that's good. Everything, everything is good. I mean, not much has happened. Ooh. Altaqia has declared war on Ottomans, and the Novgorod has dishonored their alliance with the Ottomans. That's actually really good. That's really good for us and our further expansion into the Ottomans at a later date. But right now, I'm worried about getting rid of this coalition. Um, oh, and these guys aren't even doing anything. Protect trade in Ragusa. There you go. And you... Go up into Venice. Join the really big ship that we've got. <sighs> Modna is no longer part of our realm. Uh, but we can no longer claim that Modna would be part of our realm. We lost our Casus Bella against them. That's okay. Uh, military access from QQ? No. Not going to do it. Religious civil disorder? Oh. We caught a spy from Austria. What if we declared war on them? Because, let's see, that's... Our relationship with Lucas should be okay. They should leave the... No, nobody's going to join us. Who is France at war with? They're at war with England. Dang. How are we in terms of great powers? We're actually pretty close. We're pretty close. We're getting there. Um, who else is in the coalition? Grusilet's not going to go away. Czechy's not going to go away. Naples, Luca. All right. Let's let's send a guy. If we were to declare war, what could we take? We could take Cyprus. That's our. We could bring Castile into it, but then I guarantee you, as soon as we do that, the coalition will fire. I'm almost certain. Poland is not, neither is France. 
Okay, so maybe we won't do that. Maybe we'll continue working on... Actually, you know what we'll do? We will threaten war with Luca. No. Um, no, that's not going to work. That's a bad idea. Um... What else to claim on Lika? Okay, that's fine. I'm okay with that. That gives them one less reason to hate us. They, they still hate us, but it gives them one less reason to. Do we proclaim a guarantee? Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if that will change our relationships. Uh, invest in a new idea, administrative trade. Ah, quantity ideas. The young that can serve. Oh, we also got the Venetian Arsenal. Dating from the 12th century, the Arsenal of Venice is the foundation that our power rests upon. You can see more about that in episode, uh, I don't know, seven, nine, whichever one I did about Venice proper. To ensure that we remain powerful, we must expand the Arsenal so that more ships can be produced. Awesome. And the young can serve. How old does a boy have to be before he, before he is a man? How many roads must... Anyways, um, how must he... How old must he be before he can die for his country? Some rulers are squeamish. We, on the other hand, are an equal opportunity butcher. Um, Lubeck's trade league has gone away. I really want, like, Naples to go away out of our... Out of this, I mean... I mean, they could almost be our allies if they weren't outraged. If they weren't outraged, they could be our allies. In fact, that's not a bad idea. Especially if we're going to use them to take out more of Italy. Okay, so we just need them to be less outraged. So, you know, let's proclaim a guarantee. I know this is cutting into my diplomatic power. I know this. I know this. But if we can help get them out of a coalition against us... That is extremely, extremely handy. Um, especially because these... Oh, well, Naples is no longer outraged, which means they should leave very, very soon. Can never have too much money. I like that. I like that a lot. She's, Naples has left the military coalition against us, so we will now offer an alliance... Boom, they just switched sides. This is awesome. We'll then marry into their family. This is good. This is good. A little diplomacy goes a long way, my friends. A little diplomacy goes a long way. Now, all we need to do is get, is get Ragusa to be less outraged, and I think the entire thing will collapse. Because, I mean, yeah, they're rivals, but they're not outraged. And I think somebody in the coalition needs to be outraged for it to still stick around. We still want Luca. Um, actually, no, let's marry into them. Boom. They went from in a coalition and outraged to, oh my god, we love you, let's get married and have babies. I like that. I like that a lot. But it's... Luca that we want to turn around. I mean, this is good. We've converted the heretics of Dandolo to the one true faith. Wonderful. So let's send them to Corfu. There will be a rebellion in Serbia very, very soon. That's just going to happen. Uh, Venetian particularists, that's going to go away. Mamlukian separatists. Byzantine separatists. Okay. Corfu, that's um, because of the... Missionary that I have over there. But Albania. Can we get Dorazzo? Let's get Dorazzo out of it. Because I think Dorazzo is actually the leading... The biggest city. But... Seven, six... Yeah. So this will take out, like, half... Of the rebels just by making them... Like, oh, oh, and there's Serbia. In Skopje. Oh, 24. Um... Luca has left the coalition against us. 
That's beautiful. So yeah, I think that coalition is, is starting to fall apart. Serbian separatists have taken control of Skopje, but that is okay. Actually, these 15 are going to go back there just to end that whole Albanian thing. Because Torazzo and Scutari are fine. We just have basically Valona, which means if these two would fight each other, that would be delicious. That would be delicious, and then I can just walk in and fight whoever's left. But I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, they're actually going to go up in Scutari. But that's okay. That is okay. And what is this? Is a death roll for attacker minus one? We don't want that. So let's wait for them to go into a plains. Where is the plains? None of these places are plains. Ah, oh, dang it. Well, maybe, they, hopefully they, we can get them to attack us. Um, our relations with Ragusa are fine, but you know what? They might leave the coalition too. They might leave the coalition too. Which would be beautiful. But you know, we've we've managed to whittle that whittle that down. Actually, you're gonna stay here. Let's see if we can't goad them into attacking us by getting nine thousand men back here. I really hope we can do that. I really hope. Oh no, no. You're just gonna keep going forward. Okay. Uh, dude von Poland has died. So we'll get a royal marriage offer from them soon. But you know what? Let's let's push it. Let's let's marry them. Um, I would love to support my heir, but I've found in other playthroughs that's just a, a sink of a diplomat. It has done absolutely nothing for me, but uh, it may have prevented me from doing other things. So, but there we go. Malona is now considered part of our patrimony. Our overextension is going down. That is good. Savoy declared war. Firenze has left the military coalition against us. So who is still in the coalition? It's Ragusa. And actually, you know what? We're going to send our, our, our diplomat back there. Czechy has left it. Austria has left it. So the coalition is just Ragusa. Good. Whew, that is good. And you know, it's not the first time Venice has actually been involved in a major coalition against them and managed to, you know, escape without harm. So here's a little bit of history for you. In 1454, the major Italian powers, Milan, Florence, the Papal States, and Venice, signed the Treaty of Lodi. And the purpose of this treaty was to keep the balance of power in Italy stable so that everyone would develop and everyone would become more prosperous. At the end of the 15th century, both Pope Innocent VIII and Ludovico Sforza of Milan had issues with Alfonso of Naples. So to deal with their Neapolitan problem, both Innocent VIII and Sforza invited Charles VIII of France into Italy, kicking off a series of wars that would plunge the peninsula into chaos for the next 65 years. And during these wars, Cesare Borgia, the daring condottiere and son of Pope Alexander VI, pushed the noble families out of Romagna, ostensibly consolidating the territory for the Papal States. However, these exiled families were none too pleased with their new situation and turned to Venice for help. The Serenissima quickly obliged, taking control of the region in 1503. In 1508, at the behest of Pope Julius II, Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian invaded Venice, but was soundly defeated twice by the Serenissima, conceding Trieste and Fiume in the eventual peace treaty. Frustrated at Maximilian's failures, Julius II sought more allies, eventually convincing France, Spain, the Holy Roman Empire, and Ferrara to form an anti-Venetian League of Cambrai. Together, the leaders planned to divide Venice's mainland holdings among themselves. And so in early 1509, new French King Louis XII invaded from Milan, Maximilian from Vienna, and Julius II from Rome. Within two months, Venice was crushed. Outnumbered, outmaneuvered, and out of money, Venice looked to negotiate with Julius II who demanded Venice return the Romagna, submit to complete papal authority over religious matters, and pay reparations. Louis XII, however, had other plans and continued his assault. And this is where things get interesting. In 1510, Julius II, who started this entire phase, looked at the situation and realized France was growing too strong, and further he sought to add Ferrara to his own territory. He needed an ally, however, and he turned to Venice for help. 
the same Venice whose near downfall he had orchestrated just one year prior, and whose entire citizenry he had excommunicated en masse. With the help of Swiss mercenaries, Venice and the Pope sought to expel France from Italy, and were initially very successful. Converging on Ferrara while their mercenaries distracted the French at Milan, Julius II and the Republic were confident of swift victory. But Louis bribed the Swiss to not attack, and so France marched on the Veneto Papal forces, scattering them to the wind. On the retreat, Julius somehow managed to convince much of Europe to attack France. Spain wanted Navarre, the HRE wanted Milan, England wanted Normandy, Swiss mercenaries wanted to get paid, and Venice just wanted to survive. With war on three fronts, France's armies were quickly overrun. Pushed out of first Romagna, then Brescia, then Milan, the French retreated from Italy. Things fell apart, however, when the victors debated how to divide their conquered territory. Specifically, Maximilian refused to give any Holy Roman Imperial territory back to Venice, which included all the lands the Republic had lost in the first phase of this conflict. When the Serenissima protested, Julius II reminded Venice that the League of Cambrai was still technically a thing. Angered, the Republic signed an agreement with Louis of France to divide Italy between them. And although initially successful, the Franco-Venetian alliance met defeat after defeat. Navarre fell to Spain, Tournai and Wallonia fell to England, the Swiss had to be bribed to leave, even a Scottish invasion of England was quickly quashed. In short, things were grim for France and Venice. And then a miracle happened. The Pope died. Personally, I believe Julius II's aggressive, megalomaniacal personality was a major driving force during this war. He started the League of Cambrai. He allied with Venice against France, then drew in the rest of Europe. His agreement with the Holy Roman Emperor to deny Venice gains drove the Republic to France's side. Without Julius, the Holy League fell apart, although some minor skirmishes continued. In 1516, a series of treaties slowly removed one belligerent after another from the war. Despite the dramatic alliance shifts, battles across Western Europe, mass excommunications, mercenary shenanigans, and countless deaths and devastation, nothing had changed from 1508. France kept Milan, Venice kept the Veneto, and the Pope kept Romagna. Finally, after a decade of chaos, Italy was at peace. For four years at least, when Francis of France gets his tights in a knot when Charles V of Spain, Austria, and the Netherlands is named Holy Roman Emperor, making him arguably the most powerful man in history. So France invades Italy. Again. Alright, this is good. This is good. This is good. Let's get them... I mean, Arasia, that's... I mean, it's die roll for the attackers, only minus one. Military access from Ragusa. No, we're not doing that. In fact, we're going to... Venice gets out-of-date commerce practices, global trade power, or gain one inflation. Let's get one inflation. Oh, oh, damn it, they were... Scorpio is now considered part of our patrimony. This isn't good. We're going to lose this battle to rebels. But hey, Ragusa left the military coalition against us. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. Why did I attack them? Um, hopefully they'll try to take Belgrade. But, uh... That was silly of me. I should have just threatened to attack them, and then as soon as they turn around and start to run away, I should have left them. I should have let them. And then... Oh, 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 that was silly of me again. We are doing better this time, but we are still going to lose. Oh my goodness, I'm so bad at this game. I'm so bad at this. That, that, that's just 20,000 or 10,000 men just gone. Military access from Naples? Yes. Yes, we will We will allow you to do that. Um, so I guess we're playing cat and mouse with the Serbian separatists now. Um, actually, we know we're not going to get too close. I've learned that. Um, gain 50 diplomatic power and 0.5 inflation? Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh yeah, I also wanted to increase my navy. One, two. There we go. Oh, I should have actually... Oh, dang it. I should have used my my money to replenish my troops instead of doing it that way. Crumb. But hey, you know what? The coalition... Is there still a coalition against us? Is there even still a coalition? No, there is no coalition. So hopefully we'll be able to attack Milan in the near future. And hopefully that won't put too many people into a coalition against us. 
Um, even though, let's be perfectly honest, it probably will. It probably will. We've taken a loan. Yeah, we knew that was happening. Oh, what is the next one? Administrative ideas. Mercenary costs, minus 25%. Um, yeah, let's do that, and then hopefully we can get adaptability. Mercenary captains are a canny lot. They'll try to get two commanders in the same army into a bidding war for their services. We will streamline our mercenary recruitment processes to prevent abuses by commanders and ensure we are always in the best negotiating position. That actually happened to me once for a teaching job. Two people from the Sabre organization both recruited me through other different like secondary organizations. And so they, they, they tried to say, well, you know, there's another interesting candidate that we have. So you need to make your decision quickly. Um, and then... And they each said that. And then so I turned around to each of them and said, well, you know, there's actually another organization that really wants me. And I didn't know that both of them, both of those organizations were actually the same person. And they didn't know that they were, that the both candidates were actually me, which is just kind of hilarious. I thought that was funny. Story time. Um, Ostrike has claimed Barajd as their own. Oh, well, that's... Hmm. Okay. Well, we are regaining our troops. This is good. This is very good. We finally converted the heretics of Corfu. Let's get Athens over. There we go. Serbian separatists now control Kosovo. They'll probably... Nish is now considered part of our patrimony. That's good. That is good. That is very good. Actually, who is Ragusa allied with? Savoya, receiving trade power, guaranteed by the Ottomans. So if we declare war... Ooh. No, I don't want to ally with them. They're small and tiny and their power is middling. Mainz is joined a trade league led by Genoa. Let's do it this way. I really should build an extra fortress somewhere around here, just to prevent stuff like this from happening. I mean, unrest in Katado is still nil. Council of Arensburg, His Holiness the Pope, is tasked the commission of cardinals with addressing the challenges posed by the Protestant movement. With the Catholic faith itself, while the Catholic faith itself must not be compromised, His Holiness and most cardinals are willing to admit that some Protestant complaints are valid. Therefore, the council advises many changes to the administration of the church, a stop to absentee bishops, and the worldly excesses of the clergy. In addition, several new monastic orders are to be founded to aid in the efforts of the Cantor Reformation. And that actually sounds like it would be a fantastic little history segment, so I'm going to end it with this. I'm Karhu the Great Bear of the North. Thank you all very much for watching. If you like what you see, and I really hope you do, please like, please subscribe to me on Twitch. I'm going to be doing live streams over there. Uh, please follow me on Twitter. That way you'll know, even if YouTube messes up sending out notifications, you'll know when I post new videos, and uh, either here or on Twitch, most importantly. And I really do mean this. Have a fantastic day, everybody. And I'll see you all next time in the Kingdom of Venice. Ciao. Over the last several videos, I feel I've suggested that the Catholic Church was a vile corruption of its original purpose, that all popes were megalomaniacs, all bishops thieves. That was, of course, not the case. Some members in the Church used it to serve their ambitions, but most were in it for the right reasons and wanted change as much as the Protestants. In the years following Martin Luther's public disagreement with Leo X, successive popes began to realize that something needed to change soon or they risked losing all of Christendom to the anti-papists. So, in 1545, Pope Paul III gathered the church leaders in Trento, some 150 kilometers or 95 miles, northwest of Venice. One note on Paul III before we move on. Even though he helped reform the church from within, he still had his foibles. His bastard son was a soldier during the sack of Rome in 1527, and Paul eventually named him Duke of Parma in 1546. Also, he was likely motivated to to reform by the money lost to the Protestants, but on to Trento. For nearly two decades on and off, religious representatives from all over Europe debated how best to fight back against the Protestants. 
Initially, there was some talk of discussion and reconciliation with the Protestants, but by the 1560s, such notions were abandoned. Instead, the Catholics chose to double down on doctrine. They reaffirmed transubstantiation, salvation, indulgences, relics, sacraments, and the Church's monopoly on interpretation of Scripture. However, they did make significant strides in reducing some of the more obvious corruptions of church structure. Often, especially outside the cities, priests were barely literate and frequently couldn't even speak Latin. After Trent, a number of seminary schools were founded in Milan, Benevento, Rome, Venice, and throughout Europe to ensure that all priests actually knew what they were talking about. Numerous church-sanctioned religious orders were also formed, often specifically to educate in both the old world and new. The Jesuits are the most famous of these orders, founded by Ignatius of Loyola in a Paris crypt in 1534. Their order quickly grew and spread across the world as missionaries. Of note, the current Pope, Francis, is a Jesuit. Other notable orders are the Ursulines, focused on women teaching girls, the Capuchins, named after their ubiquitous hoods, who emphasized working with the underprivileged, and the first such order, the Theatines, who sought to set an example to the laity through moral excellence. Finally, the Catholic Church set about to reinvigorate their image through, well, images. Railing against the perceived paganism and sexuality of high Renaissance works like Michelangelo's The Last Judgment and the austerity of many Protestant churches, the Catholics sought to bring dignity, gravitas, and piety to their churches. They commissioned art that was distinctly religious in content, rather than landscapes or civic scenes, for example, and were immediately relatable and identifiable. My personal favorites from this time period are Caravaggio, Titian, and Bernini. Unfortunately, from an artistic viewpoint, this movement gave rise to Baroque art, and the less said about that, the better.